Well, good morning. It's day three of my trip. It's Saturday and it's curry cleanup day. We're all awake. It's about seven o'clock now. I'm drinking my monster to wake myself up. And we're about to head up to the top of the mountain to take a look and get to work. Let's go. All right, well, here we go. Three miles up, three miles down. Apparently, technically, it's like 2.85, uh, but you can't actually go from the starting point where the guys at Camp Tacoa started up because that's from a separate gate, and that gate usually remains locked. Um, so there's a separate entrance that goes all the way out to the main road, and that's where we enter in with our vehicles. Uh, but right here's where the gate's closed, and they haven't opened it yet. Uh, but they're going to be opening it for us to drive up and start our cleanup work. But I'm uh, doing it the old-fashioned way. We'll see how this goes. So one of the things they don't tell you, or that you don't really get to see in the movie, is that it's not just a straight three miles uphill. It kind of goes back down and then up again. So you're kind of repeating the elevation. Like right now, we're going downhill. And we really haven't even gone uphill much so far. So it's gonna be interesting when we get a little closer how steep it gets. Now we're going uphill. I don't know what I was thinking running here. Oh, that's good for now. I feel like I'm giving up all the ground I just made by going back downhill like this. You can't even see where Curry even is, like to see how far you are from the top or anything. No, it's well at one point doesn't it you come out of the you come out of this part and then you can see, right? Like that last mile or something. Yeah, I think it, it gets straight after this from what I saw on the map. I'll take a look. Oh, a mile from the top, and here we go downhill again. Yeah, this is the part where everybody's running. This is ridiculously steep downhill, and we're less than a mile from the top. You don't see much of that part in Band of Brothers, but it's kind of defeating because you feel like you've done all this climbing up only to go back down again, knowing that you're gonna have to go back up again. It's crazy. So I guess back in like the eighties, there was a ranger for the forest service who lived up here. And this is the house they live in. It's really well hidden. We didn't even see it till we were probably 20 feet away from it. We're about, you know, just under a mile from the top now. Crazy, nobody lives there now, obviously. All right, back uphill we go. Now we're getting steep going uphill. Eight tenths of a mile to go. Got a helicopter overhead. Still the entire time, the entire over two miles now, never once have got a glimpse of the top. Just can't see it. Hoping maybe we will here soon. All right, so first two miles, it's kind of, flat with some downhills, some uphills, but nothing real steep and nothing for very long. You hit right at about the two mile mark with a mile to go. Suddenly it's a 
steep incline with no brakes. And I can imagine how this must have felt carrying all your equipment. These guys are in tremendous shape. Four tenths of a mile to go. This whole last mile has been steep and uphill, and it's kicking my butt. Whew. Hardcore. A lot of twists and turns, too. Still have not seen the top. Nice view from up here. You can see how high up we are. Heart been going about 160 beats a minute for the last 20 minutes or so. feel like if I was running with a group of 80 or 90 guys and we were singing in unison, this might maybe go by a little easier than it has. But we're three tenths of a mile from the top. This is the longest straightaway we've had. Still pretty steep up, uphill. Well, the truck finally caught up with us with the rest of the group. Two tenths of a mile to go. I'm not hitching a ride now. Woo, this is steep. We're almost there. Looking down the, the straight part of the hill at the rest of the crew, just to give you an idea of how long and how, it's hard to tell the, the incline, how steep this is, unless you see it. We've got this one more turn, and then we should see the top. And this will actually be the first time I've really been in the sunlight. So that's a blessing. I guess that's it. At least this is part of the part of the graffiti here. And oh man, what a view we're about to have. Wow. Wow. My goodness. This is incredible. Well, I was told you haven't finished until you touch the marker, the marker that they would hit to signify they were at the top and then they could start back down. It's not as high as what they show in Band of Brothers, it's down here on the ground, but this is the reference mark. Now I've completed Curry. Time to get to work. They were coming in Monday or Tuesday, oh, awesome. or Tuesday. They said Monday or Tuesday, I'm like, we're not open Monday. <laughs> well, we're gonna be around, but we're not open. <laughs> Didn't really appreciate all you're doing. Um, I really wish Philip could have been up here to be with y'all. But uh, he is trying to finish packing up and get ready to leave. He's driving out tomorrow. He's got to go to Arkansas first, and then he's headed to uh, the Gila National Forest.
All right, well, this is where my team's gonna start working. Right here on the side of a cliff. If I trip, I'm going down a long way, so. Here we go. Alright, so we have this stuff here. It's called elephant snot, and it really does look like that. And then we, we use a paintbrush to coat everything. And then we wait for 45 minutes, and then we scrub it off. So now we wait. Well, we're off to a good start. Um, it's been a little over an hour since we first applied the elephant snot and uh, show you some clips. A lot of the stuff's coming up and scrubbing. It's just, it's tough to rinse it off. We don't have quite enough water pressure to get all the paint off, but the paint is definitely dissolving. Uh, put another coat on some tougher spots. Gonna eat a lemon poppy muffin and have some water while it does that, it does its work. We're making progress, it's just, we got some tough colors, blue and red and black. They're just being stubborn. But it's, uh, we're trying to wash it and it's slowly coming. Just probably needs another couple of coats and another couple of scrubs. Lunch time. Some folks in our group were very kind and picked up some sandwiches and chips this morning. We've got a bunch of bottles of water, so we're pretty well set. Uh, gonna sit down and relax for a little bit in the shade and enjoy it. Try and get what we have elephants not afraid of. It's like a That brush is no more. All right, we're doing it. Dumping it. Yep. All right, I'll roll it. All right, this I'll get on camera. <laughs> Dumping the elephant's not. Get it in slow mo. Too. Yes. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. Woohoo! It's amazing the things that we find satisfying. <laughs> Chemical properties. Look how viscous it is.
Well, it's three o'clock and uh, I think we're about done for the day. We did not get to nearly all of the graffiti, but we made a lot of progress and it looks a whole lot better than it did. It's the absolute least that we could do to honor these incredible men who trained here to help save the world. And uh, it's in honor of all of them that we are all here. It's why we've all come from all over the country. We've got people here from Nevada, West Virginia, Missouri, uh, Florida, Texas, and of course Ohio for me. Uh, all here with one common cause to honor uh, the men who trained here uh, and then went overseas, many of whom never to return. And we are grateful that we could do one little tiny thing to say thank you for what they did. Time to head back down.